Hello viewers, welcome to the next section, working with the Flask API. In this section we will learn about working with resourceful routing, configuring resource routing and endpoints, working with the command line tool HTTPIE, working with the GUI tool Postman. Now we move on to the video, working with resourceful routing and endpoints. In this video we will create a subclass of the resource class and declare the methods for each supported HTTP verb. Also, we will declare one class to represent the collection of messages and another one to represent the message resource. First, we will create a message class that we will use to represent the message resource. Open the previously created API.py file within the API folder and add the class message block of code which is highlighted. The code file for the sample is included in the RESTful Python section 02 folder. The message class is a subclass of flask restful.resource and declares the three methods that will be called when the HTTP method with the same name arrives as a request on the represented resource. Get method receives the ID of the message that has to be retrieved in the ID argument. The code calls the self.abort if message doesn't exist method to abort in case there is no message with the requested ID. In case the message exists, the code returns the message model instance whose ID that matches the specified ID returned by the message manager .get message method. The get method uses the marshal with decorator with message fields as an argument. The decorator will take the message model instance and apply the field filtering and output formatting specified in the message fields. Delete method receives the ID of the message that has to be deleted in the ID argument. The code calls the self.abort if message doesn't exist method to abort in case there is no message with the requested ID. In case the message exists, the code calls the message manager .delete message method with the received ID as an argument to remove the message model instance from our data repository. Then the code returns an empty response body and a 204 no content status code. Patch method receives the ID of the message that has to be updated or patched in the ID argument. The code calls the self.abort if message doesn't exist method to abort in case there is no message with the requested ID. In case the message exists, the code saves the message model instance whose ID that matches the specified ID returned by the message manager.getMessage method in the message variable. The next line creates a request parser instance named parser. The request parser instance allows us to add arguments with their names and types and then easily pass the arguments received with the request. The code makes four calls to the parser.add argument with the argument name and the type of the four arguments we want to pass. Then the code calls the parser.pass arguments method to pass all the arguments from the request and saves the return dictionary in the arguments variable. The code updates all the attributes that have new values in the arguments dictionary in the message model instance message. The request doesn't require including the four fields that can be updated with the values. The code returns the updated message. The patch method uses the marshal with decorator with message fields as an argument. The decorator will take the message model instance, message, and apply the field filtering and output formatting specified in message fields. As previously explained, the three methods call the internal abort if message does an exist method that receives the ID for an existing message model instance in the ID argument. If the received ID is not present in the keys of the message manager .message dictionary, the method calls the abort function with the status .http404 not found as the HTTP status code argument and a message indicating that the message with the specified ID doesn't exist. The abort function raises an HTTP exception for the received HTTP status code and attaches the additional keyword arguments to the exception for later processing. In this case, we generate an HTTP 404 not found status code. Both the get and patch methods use the marshal with decorator that takes a single data object or a list of data objects and applies the field filtering and output formatting. The marshalling can also work with dictionaries. In both methods, we specified message fields as an argument and therefore the code renders the fields those are ID, message, duration, printed times and printed once. The return statement with the marshal with message fields decorator returns an HTTP 200 OK status code because we didn't specify any status code after the returned object message. The return marshal line of code is really executed with the marshal with message fields decorator and we can use it instead of working with the decorator. For example, we can call the marshal function as shown in the screen instead of using the marshal with decorator and the code will produce the same result. We will now save the file to keep the changes. 
Now we will create a message list class that we will use to represent the collection of messages. Open the previously created API.py file within the API folder and add the message list block of code into the API.py file. The message list class is a subclass of resource and declares the get and post methods that will be called when the HTTP method with the same name arrives as a request on the represented resource. Get method returns a list with all the message model instances saved in the message manager.messages dictionary. The get method uses the Marshall with decorator with message fields as an argument. The decorator will take each message model instance in the returned list and apply the field filtering and output formatting specified in the message fields. Post method creates a request parser instance named parser. The request parser instance allows us to add arguments with their names and types and then easily pass the arguments received with the post request to create a new message model instance. The code makes three calls to the parser.add argument with the argument name and the type of the three arguments we want to pass. Then the code calls the parser.pass arguments method to pass all the arguments from the request and saves the return dictionary in the arguments variable. The code uses the passed arguments in the dictionary to specify the values for the message, duration and message category attributes to create a new message model instance and save it in the message variable. The value for the creation date argument is set to the current date time with time zone info and therefore it isn't passed from the request. Then the code calls the message manager dot insert message method with the new message model instant message to add this new instance to the dictionary. The post method uses the marshal with decorator with message fields as an argument. The decorator will take the recently created and stored message model instance, message, and apply the field filtering and output formatting specified in message fields. The code returns an HTTP 201 created status code. Save the file to keep the changes. Now we will see the table that shows the method of our previously created classes that we want to be executed for each combination of HTTP verb and scope. Get collection of messages message list dot get get message message dot get post collection of messages message list dot post patch message message dot patch delete message message dot delete if the request results in the invocation of a resource with an unsupported HTTP method Flask RESTful will return a response with the HTTP 405 method not allowed status code. 